So you're looking to buy a aluminum pergola that's motorized, that opens and closes so you can control the sun or the rain when you want it on your patio. Let's go over how to install it right now. So let's rewind and let's talk through exactly how it arrives and what you're going to be receiving so that way you can see what you're going to have. We're gonna start first in boxes. This is basically how you're gonna receive the actual pergola itself. It's gonna be in these long boxes mainly because everything's a really long extrusion up to this one right here is actually a 20 foot long box. This is a 12 by 20 unit. First, when you're gonna assemble a unit like this, let's go through exactly what you should already have before you receive it in order to make sure you can assemble it. First, you need a rotary hammer. You need a 3 8 rotary hammer bit, all your safety protection, so that's going to be work gloves, safety glasses, and hearing protection, painter's tape, a 25 foot measuring tape, utility knife, screwdriver, wire strippers, channel lock pliers, an impact driver, usually cordless is what we'd recommend, a 9 16 socket, a socket adapter for your impact driver, paper towels, a caulk gun, a 72 inch level to make sure everything is plumb. And then you need two, we recommend two eight foot ladders. Some optional things you can use for the anchors themselves would be a blower. This is a cordless blower or a shop vacuum, uh, both of which would help make sure that the hole is clear before you run the anchor. Here we've got all the boxes for the small parts as well as the post bases. So each of these boxes here that are 20 inches tall, that's what you're gonna unbox typically first. These have all of those post bases in them. They're also noted saying that they're post base and hardware. So you're gonna start with these and then this is your uh, hardware and electrical box and that's gonna have all of your other hardware, your screws, that sort of thing. So it unboxes like this. You're gonna first look to make sure that you can see as you unload it that you have all of the boxes. So if it says number nine of 20, you need to have 20 boxes, make sure you have 20. They're also all going to have a color that matches what is listed on the bill of lading or BOL. So you check your color, make sure it matches here, make sure your name is correct, the color is correct, the size, and you get all of the number of boxes that you received up to 20 boxes. Next, what we're gonna do is just unbox everything and then show you laid out exactly what you're gonna receive in the kit. So just a note on our post bases here, you're gonna have four post bases. They're gonna look identical. So all of them have this notch in here. This is designed for the drainage or electrical posts, but technically they're all interchangeable. They all will look the same. So that way you don't have to worry about which one's used for what. Just make sure when we go later to do the drainage post, the electrical post, that the electrical hole lines up with this side of the post base and the drainage slot lines up with the drainage slot in the post base. If you buy a unit with no trim on it, so no base trim here like this, then the post base itself will come coated in the same color as your frame. Like this unit is a bronze frame, so you'll get bronze post bases. If you buy a unit that has base trim, these will come uncoated. Now they're stainless steel, so it shouldn't matter. It's mainly coated just for aesthetics, but if you buy a unit with base trim, these will be uncoated. Just so you know, on the small parts, this is everything you're gonna use to put the unit together, other than obviously the long assembly pieces like the posts and beams and gutters. So the gutters themselves, you will have these gutter connectors that will come four of them. They'll be drilled out and labeled for electrical and drainage. And then two of them will say standard. Those are just your normal corners that are not your electrical and drainage corners. This part right here is actually your motor connect. This we will use at the very end to connect onto your link bar that then connects to your motor to make it actually operational. These are your tubes of caulk. This is to seal the unit itself. Right here, this is your touch-up paint. We will either send uh, small cans like this as a spray paint. Make sure you shake them up. If you don't shake them up, the sheen won't be perfect. So make sure you shake them for a good 10 minutes before you use them. Or you will get a touch-up pen, which you basically just use like a pen. Over here, we have an electrical box. This is housing all of the electric you need. You have a nine foot, 110 volt cord that comes out this side that plugs into a standard outlet. And on this side, you have your landscape wire that actually connects to your motor, which will show you how that works. There's 50 feet of line here, so you should have plenty for whatever you need to do, whether you wanna trench this in your, your yard or whatnot. Inside this box here, you have your remote 
and that's really the only thing you need inside of there other than there's also brackets that you can use if you want to mount this to a wall that's also in there here you have your shims you'll use these if you need to shim up the post bases to get your post plumb so there's two packs of composite shims in here this box right here is your waterproof connection box you'll use this to actually attach the motor to the landscape line as a terminal basically for your landscape line to your motor. Here you have your motor itself. Then over here on this side, you have your caps and your sleeves. Those are decorative to hide the connection of each beam to the next beam. On the far end, you have a big bag of end caps. Those get mounted onto every single louver to drop into the slots themselves in order to let the thing actually rotate. Also on this side, you have your six and a half inch insert. These are used to connect your posts to your gutter connectors to your beam to beam connectors. And I'll show you how that assembles a little later. And then you have a pack of your beam to beam connectors, which obviously attach a beam to a beam. Other than that, you have small parts here. So bag A is gonna be all your bits that we provide to run all the screws that we give you. Bag B is your one inch number 12s. Those will be used to attach your beam to beam connector to your six and a half inch insert. C will be used to attach your gutter connector to the six and a half inch insert. D's will be used as your number 10 screws. Those will be for all of the non-structural parts, which we'll show you where that goes. And bag L is used for all your structural connections. So those are your number 14 screws. They'll be used for all the post connections and beam connections. Bag M is your push nuts. Those will be used to attach your louvers to the link bar. Please make sure when you attach these push nuts that your link bar is perfect because these will not come off unless you cut them off. So make sure you get that correct. Bag P is your anchors to attach your post base down to the concrete itself. Bag R attaches your end caps to your louvers as well as your caps to the top of the beam to beam connector. And bag S is your motor assembly. So all the parts you need to attach the motor and get that functional on the unit, as well as the two grommets you'll use to run the wire. So the first thing we're gonna do, we've already unboxed all the small parts. We've unboxed the posts. They're on the far end there. We're gonna sleeve all the posts onto the post bases, ensuring that the drainage slot lines up with the drainage slot in the post base, and the electrical hole lines up with the slot in the post base in order to get those in the right spot. We're gonna put our electrical post actually here on this near corner, and our drainage is gonna go on this near corner as well. So the drainage will face out towards the camera and the electrical will face out towards the camera so you can see what we're doing. Those are interchangeable. You can turn them in any direction or have them face wherever you want or put them anywhere you want on the unit. So all that you can decide when you actually receive the unit. So we're gonna start with that and we'll come back. As a note, we recommend to slide the beams and gutters out as well as the louvers and posts everything to slide out of the box rather than cutting the box open because if you start cutting into it you could very easily cut the beam itself or cut the post and uh, you don't want to do that uh, all of these are obviously going to face uh, you know your yard or your neighbor and so you don't want to have a big scratch down the side of your beam so slide everything out of the boxes one thing we recommend when you're laying out the unit try and measure out the space and know where everything's going to be so ours is a 12 by 20 unit. It's the largest kit that we offer. And the biggest thing to note there is the post bases themselves, the flanges are actually an inch and a half beyond that. So technically when we laid this out, we made sure that from one edge of the outside of that post base to the other edge on the outside of that post base was 20 feet, three inches. So that way we knew exactly where those should go. And then we squared everything and made sure everything was in the right area as we laid it out. So just make sure you know where you're gonna put it and lay it out generally, try and get it square before you start doing this. You can change it after as you start to assemble the unit, but it's something that does help. After you've slid the posts down onto the post bases, you wanna make sure you anchor them off to the post bases. You should have four holes on all sides. Other than your drainage and electrical posts, your drainage post will be missing two screws and your electrical post will be missing one screw. You should put in on all those small pilot holes a number 14 screw that comes from bag L and make sure you put that in using the impact driver that you already have, as well as the 3 8 bit that comes out of bag A.
As you've probably already figured out, the two screws that are hitting the cavity in the post space are dummy screws. They're not gonna anchor in. Doesn't change the structural load whatsoever. So they're just there for aesthetics, so don't worry about them. So the next thing to do after all these posts have had all the screws put in them is to assemble your connectors. You have three versions of these six and a half inch inserts. One is drilled out for drainage. One is a standard one that looks like this. It doesn't have any holes in it, extra holes in it and one has an electrical hole drilled in it right there. For the standard connectors, it doesn't really matter your orientation, other than the fact that you always make sure that the gutter connector is facing out like this. So you wanna make sure that as you slide this connector in, you line up on these last four holes here on this corner. So that as you line it up, it looks something like that. So all your standard connectors will just anchor together like that. You'll use bag C to actually attach those screws down. The C ones are shorter than the B ones. You'll attach four screws in on the standard connectors just like that. On the electrical connector, it's the same thing, except you're gonna line up both your electrical hole here, as well as all of your holes for your screw. So you wanna make sure that both of those holes line up, and then you attach those four screws in right there. That way you have both your electrical hole and your holes into this. Same thing, bag C is gonna attach those four screws down into the connector. And to be repetitive, your drainage connector is gonna do essentially the exact same thing. You're gonna line up your drainage connector, your drainage hole with your drainage connector and then make sure that everything lines and then put your four C screws also in there. Next, you need to attach your beam to beam connectors to your new assembly. So you wanna take this. There's no specific beam to beam connector for different gutter or drainage connectors. So all of them look the exact same. They have two larger holes and two smaller holes. So there's no difference. The only thing you need to make sure is that the two larger holes are gonna go to the outside of the connector. So that side and that side. So your angled fin needs to be facing me. Your two holes should be facing in like this. And then if you look at it the other way, you'll see the fin is facing out and these two holes are facing. And then you're gonna run B screws through the bottom of the connector up into those four bosses in the actual extrusion itself. So four B screws are gonna go into each of these, make sure these holes are facing out. I was just reminded also, uh, there is no orientation to these, meaning that this can be the bottom like that, or you can flip it over and that can be the bottom. So don't worry about a top or a bottom for these. Before you start going too far, make sure that you run the wire, your landscape wire, up your electrical post. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna add the grommet. There are two black grommets that come in bag S. You're gonna put one of those grommets into the post down there at the bottom, and then you're gonna feed the wire into the post, lean it over, and then use a tape measure to actually fish the wire through. Once you pull it through, then you'll tape it off to the top of the post. We're gonna go through that now. One thing to note when you pull out the wire through the post, we like to double the wire back on the post. These posts are standard nine foot height. If you double it back on the post and go a little beyond, then you can make sure that you have at least 10 feet on a 20 foot unit to make sure you can make it all the way to the motor. So we usually recommend to make sure you have 10 feet coming out through one side to make sure you have enough to make it to the motor. Uh, you can always take it back through if you have too much later but that way you know you have enough in the actual unit itself. One of the other things down at the grommet, you may have difficulty getting the grommet in because it's a tight fit. So using one of the bits that we gave you can help to actually wedge it in there and then fill out that hole to make sure the hole is open enough for the wire itself. When we anchor this post, just note, we're only gonna put one anchor in one of the posts. That's to keep the whole unit from not falling over. But because you're only putting one anchor in, if you end up putting it to where you have it twisted the wrong way, you can always twist it back when the whole unit is built. So just put one anchor in one post. Please be aware when you put that anchor in, if it's in the wrong spot, you will have to take the anchor back out and you'll have a nice hole in your concrete. So please make sure you're in the right area for that one post, at least to start. All the anchors you're gonna need are gonna be right here. They're in bag P. They're three inches long. So you need to make sure when you run this hammer drill or the rotary hammer that you end up going at least three and a half inches deep in the concrete itself. Uh, one trick you can use is you can use the anchor itself, place the anchor on the actual bit itself so that you basically have it to where the flange is at the top of the bit itself. And then you can see your actual depth go down another half inch and then put some painter's tape that you have on the bit so that you can sight exactly how deep you are as you anchor it down. So that is a really helpful way to make sure that you get enough depth on your, um, on your rotary hammer bit while you're driving the anchors. 
To actually run it, you're gonna use your rotary hammer and the 3 8 rotary bit, and then you're also going to use your impact driver with the socket adapter and the 9 16 socket to anchor these down, so that way you run this drive it down into the ground using the impact driver. Now that your post is anchored, your wires run, all the other posts are sleeved and the screws are in it, you're gonna actually set each of these connectors in the posts themselves. When you set them in, make sure that these are facing out of the unit. So for example, if this was going in the electrical post, it would sit like this with the flange facing to the inside of the unit. On the far post, it would sit like that. Same on this side, sitting like that with the flange facing in. So you wanna make sure that you align these correctly. Also make sure that your drainage connector goes with your drainage post and your electrical connector goes with your electrical post. Before you set your electrical connector, you're gonna use your second grommet from bag S, place it in this hole right here, and then run the wire through this hole as you set the connector and then tape it back to the post after you're done. One thing to note on the electrical one, please make sure that the wire is actually on the interior of the unit when you tape it down, otherwise it's gonna be in the way of the beams that you're gonna place on the entire exterior. So that's a good note, make sure it's on the interior of the gutter connector and then tape to the post. So the unit that we're building here does not have base trim on it, which is why those post bases are color matched. If this unit did have base trim, then those post bases would be just standard stainless steel. So this unit doesn't have it, but I'll still show you how the base trim goes on before you put those gutter connectors up there, you wanna make sure that you slide your base trim down the post and set it down at the base so that way it's already in place. Uh, later when you attach the anchors, when you square and plumb this, you'll have to lift the base trim back up and tape it to the post to hold it halfway at the post as you run those anchors and then take the tape off and let it slide all the way down again. But make sure you add those base trim collars before you actually attach the gutter connectors or the whole gutter connector, beam connector assembly into the actual post itself. Then after all of them are set, you're gonna actually screw them off to the post. You do have four screws on all four sides. You can notice from the piece here that there's only two flanges and not four flanges. The reason why there's four is so that if someone changes their mind or they receive it, we want all the posts to be able to turn in any direction to make sure your electrical face is exactly where you want it to face and your drainage face is exactly where you want it to face. So only two sides are actually gonna catch this. The other two sides are dummy screws, but that allows you to build this however you want and all of them being interchangeable. So, so far you've only unboxed your posts, your post bases, your hardware box. So what's left are your louvers and your beam assemblies. So take your beam assemblies out of their boxes. Inside one of those boxes, either B or D or B and D together, you'll find your link bar. That's that big, long, flat piece of aluminum that has a circle and a U-punch out of it. Take that out and set it to the side. You will use that after you've set your louvers. So take all your A, C, B and D walls out. The way you orient yourself uh, is D wall. If D wall is this back wall right here, then A would be the wall to the side, B is the wall in front, and C is the wall to my left. So that's how we orient them. Technically, A and C and B and D are interchangeable, but that's how we would orient them to make sure that you know what we're talking about in terms of layout. So we will set our D wall in the back here, A will go here, B will go on this front, and C goes on that side over there. So we'll unbox all our beams, we'll set them to the side, and then we'll put them all up. So now we're gonna assemble B, D, A, and C wall. Uh, we wanna make sure that as we bring these up, that you're safe. This we definitely recommend, especially on the 20 foot beam, like that one back there to use three people. Two can hold it in place, and one can bounce from one side to the next, and put the screws through the beam to beam connector into the actual beam itself. So we'll show you that assembly here as we get going. Just as a note, when you're installing this whole thing, especially if it's not square, uh, it's such a tight fit. You might need to loosen those screws that are tying the gutter connector down to the six and a half inch insert just to give yourself some room to attach the four number 14s through the beam to beam connector into the beam. And then you can put those four screws back in because the beam to beam needs to be flush to the beam on the inside of the unit. After you get all the walls up, you wanna make sure now that you'll square the unit so you get the entire unit square. 
and then you plumb the posts. So that's what your 72 inch level is gonna be for. So once everything's square, so equal dimension, diagonal from one side to the next side at the top of the unit, as well as the bottom of the unit, and all the posts are plumb, that's where your composite shims come in if you need to use those to fill any gaps in order to plumb up those posts. Then you're gonna anchor all the posts down into the concrete, doing the same thing you did on the last one. Make sure you drill it out. You can use your painter's tape on your hammer drill in order to make sure your depth is correct. Anchor them down with the impact driver and the 9 16th socket. When you drill it out, after you drill it out, you can always use a blower or a vacuum in order to clear out all the dust before you send the anchor into the ground. We'll finish then doing the sleeves at the top, the caps, uh, and then we're also then gonna seal the unit itself and we'll get started on louvers. The sleeve on the side is decorative and the cap at the top is to seal that corner connector off from water. So on the side, all you're going to do is take your caulk gun. You haven't opened it yet, but now you will. In order to open the caulk, if you haven't used it before, you're gonna place it on one of your sawhorses, use a utility knife to cut the end off of the threaded portion of the caulk tube. Then you're gonna put the tip on, you're gonna screw it down, and then you're gonna cut the tip typically at a 45 degree angle in order to make sure that you have an angled surface for the caulk to, to flow through. Then you're going to pump it to get some of the caulk through and you're gonna go up to the actual corner connector. You're gonna lay four lines, two on one side, two on the other side of caulk onto the corner connector. Then you're gonna place and set that corner cover. And that's essentially, like I said, a decorative piece to hide the mill finish that's behind it. On the top, you're gonna to take your corner connector cap you're gonna set it on top of the extrusion. It's gonna have four screw holes. You're gonna use your end cap screws. Those are the ones that take the T27 bit or the smaller bit that actually go into it more like a Phillips drive. And you're gonna drive those four screws on the top in order to anchor down that cap. So now you're ready to seal. NovaFlex has specifications about their product. Please find those online using our paper manual. You'll find a QR code that brings you there that talks all about it. But we will go through the actual application of their sealant. You're gonna use the same caulk gun you used for the corner cover. You're gonna apply that caulk in an even pattern across several different legs. You're gonna apply it up the corner of your beam to beam junction. You're gonna apply it over the top of the gutter connector. You're gonna apply it through the middle of the gutter connector. You're gonna apply it around the base where the actual gutter lays in to the gutter connector, up the leg inside of that gutter connector that meets the gutter itself. The same thing on the other side in all those same spots. Once you've applied the caulk, then we wanna make sure that you smooth it out. The best way to do this is frankly with your hand. Some people use a tool for it. If you're gonna use your hand, please make sure that if you're using a dark frame color, you're gonna know that it's gonna stain your hand for a couple days after. So black and bronze will likely stain your hands for a few days. So when you actually spray it in there, you're gonna use a light touch, just a little bit of pressure, and then run your finger along it to smooth it out. We smooth out the caulk to be essentially a ramp for the water as it moves into the gutter connector. The next place to seal is gonna be the top of the gutter as it meets the beam. Same thing, you're gonna use a light bead along the entire surface there, and then you're gonna come back through with your finger to actually tool that bead in, smooth it out, and make it look nice and pretty. Paper towels are your friend. Make sure that you use paper towels to wipe off the caulk as you go. You don't want to have the same finger spread in caulk and then end up spreading it everywhere else on the unit and on yourself. Uh, I have Anthony over here. He is taking all the louvers out of the bags and out of the boxes and setting them to the side. We're putting end caps on those and running the end cap screws. Each louver gets one end cap on each side and two screws inside those two screw bosses, which we'll show you. And then over here, Chris is taking the retainer strip, which is this L angle strip of extrusion that's sitting above what we would call the pivot strip, which is the piece of metal that has used punched in it. He's taking that off and putting it on top of the beam 
lining up with where the screws were that he took off because each of these retainers is not identical. So you need to keep the retainers near where they're supposed to go so that after we take each of these louvers and set them in their pivot strips, we can then drop the retainer back to its original position where it was, drive the screws back where the screws were, and then also put screws number 10s, which is in your bag D, in each of those holes that's also just pilot driven. So we didn't put screws in every single spot that you need to put screws because we wanted to make sure that a lot of those screws would still have a lot of grip and a lot of bite. So a lot of them are just pilot driven. And so you need to put screws in every single hole, whether it was originally a screw or is just a driven hole. But first we're gonna take those retainers, set them on top of the beams, and then we're gonna take these louvers, put end caps on them and put them all in. At this point that you're putting them all in, one thing to note is to think about which way they're gonna close Typically, the fin side, so it's the arc side that has the pile weather stripping, that is going to be your closing side. It's the louver, it's the direction the louvers are actually closing. And so the big thing to note there is typically people want them either closing to the north or to the east, some variation of them, or northeast. And that just gives them better range to have the louvers partially opened, but still total shade underneath. So in this case, we're gonna assume that this is our north end and all our louvers will be sitting with the fin that way. I would start on the closing side, the farthest clo closing side, so the, the louver that is furthest over on the pile weather strip side, and then move this way so that they can always interlock with one another. So we're gonna start that way, starting on the closing side with how we set the louvers in. We'll also start on the closing side when we put our link bar in. Now that all the louvers are set, we're gonna add those retainer strips that we took off and set on top of the beams. We're gonna drop them back in place and screw them off to the unit. You will anchor that retainer strip down with the screws from bag D. Now that the retainer strip is set, the next thing you're gonna do is attach the link bar. Link bar is that long bar that came with your B or your D wall or your BD, assuming it's in one box. Uh, you're going to take that long flat piece. You're gonna check which end you're gonna start with. So this is how you do it. First, look at the link bar and you're gonna have a larger spacing from the U slot to the hole on one side and the other side is going to be shorter. So if you look at a U, it's gonna be further away from one of the holes, closer to another. You're gonna start with the end where the hole is farther from the U rather than the end where the hole is closer to the U on the opposite side. You're gonna take that circle or that hole, you're gonna bring it up and you're gonna start on the closing side putting the hole on the closing side of that louver, which you can see us do right now. As long as you start that way, everything should lay in correctly. Just a note, if you are unsure, slow down, <laughs> make sure you verify with what we're doing on the video because once you put the push nuts on the end caps, you're gonna to have to cut them off in order to take them off. So make sure you're on there correctly the first time so you don't have to cut anything off. Uh, so watch us as we place this and then we'll go from there. Set the channel locks to bigger than the nub on the end cap and then put the push nut on at a 45 degree angle, put the channel locks down onto the push nut and then basically just lever the push nut on till it's seated and pushed all the way back to where the link bar is pressed up against the rim of the end cap nub and the push nut is fully seated down. There's no slop on that link bar, it can't slide on the nub. After the link bar here, if you have a top trim package that you purchased from us, that's when you would install it. First with the corners and then with the long extrusions with the letters also matching the walls. So B wall crown, after the corners are placed, you would lift B wall crown in place and screw it down through the preset holes. Before you tie the landscape to the waterproof box, make sure you open up the electrical box and take the remote out 
you'll find it inside the electrical control box. And then close the electrical control box again, place it somewhere near your house, near the outlet that you plan on using. So the first thing we wanna do before we put the actual motor plate on is set up the electrical portion of the unit. Make sure everything's operational before we get up there with the motor. So to go over the electrical, we made it as simple as we possibly could. What we recommend is taking that landscape wire that is currently taped to your post, taking it off, bringing it down to the ground, and wiring on the ground. It's the simplest way to do it so that you're not doing it up in the air. You're gonna take our electrical junction box that shipped with the unit, and it shipped with an additional screwdriver as well. You're gonna take the top off of that electrical box. You're gonna feed the wire in from each side. One is gonna have the wire from the motor itself, and one will have the landscape wire that we shipped with the unit that you had taped to the post. Once you run each line through the electrical box, then you're going to cut the landscape line if you need to cut it. If you don't, you can use the existing line as it is, but you'll cut that line. You'll need to then split it in half. So when you use your knife, you're gonna to wanna to place it in the groove and actually cut that in half and then peel them away from one another. And then you use wire strippers to actually take off the sheathing off of the landscape wire if you've cut them. Then you'll take the gray terminal and you'll actually stab in each end of the motor connection and tie it with the small screwdriver that shipped with the electrical package. Once you have that all tied together, then you're gonna stab in the ends of the landscape wire into that terminal and match them with the corresponding colors. Red should match with the landscape wire that has wording on it and black should match with the landscape wire that has a groove that you can feel on the opposite side of the seam that, that once joined them. If when you fire the motor later and the up button corresponds different than what we go through, there's a way to switch it later and we can show you how to do that in one of our troubleshooting videos. Once you have those terminals fastened down, then you can set that main gray terminal box down into the electrical box itself. There will be pegs that it actually aligns to that will hold that terminal in place. Then you're gonna pull the excess wire back through the ends of either side, and then you're going to tighten each end by screwing it down. That is sealing the actual box or that electrical connection. So make sure you tighten each of those ends down. You'll see that yellow gasket is sealing the wire down and actually keeping water from coming in. Then you're gonna take the cover, you're gonna place the cover back on top of the electrical connection box, and then you're going to put the screws back through it and tighten them down all the way to make sure you have a waterproof connection. Once that's all done, I want you to take your electrical box, bring it over to your nearest outlet and plug in the excess wire into that outlet. Now you're operational, your motor should be able to run and then use the remote to extend the motor all the way. If your motor's not extending, we have troubleshooting videos, please check our library of those to make sure that you have all the information that you need to make sure everything works correctly. But extend the motor all the way. When you press the down button on the remote, the motor should extend. If when you press down, the motor uh, doesn't extend, but rather wants to retract, then swap the terminals, unplug it, and swap the terminals on the waterproof box that you just put together, and then plug it in and try it again. It should work correctly. Extend the motor all the way. Now that the waterproof junction box is assembled, put it in the gutter. Then you need to attach the motor connection assembly. For now, I would set the motor just in the gutter and let it wait. And then take the motor connection bar or assembly, raise it up in place, use the 3 8 bolts and the 3 8 lock nuts. The channel lock pliers will go on one side, your impact driver with the socket adapter and the 9 16th drive will go on the other. Tighten each of those three bolts till you have it rigid and fully seated on the link bar itself. Then lift the motor into place where it is positioned behind towards the non-closing side of the unit facing towards the motor connect assembly and then put your 10 millimeter shoulder bolt through the motor itself. After you thread the 10 millimeter shoulder bolt through the motor itself, put the 10 millimeter sleeve onto that, that's the brass looking part, onto the shoulder, that's to keep the motor positioned correctly. Then thread the actual end of the shoulder bolt through the motor connection assembly, and then use the flange in bag S, all of this is in bag S, on the outside of the motor connect assembly and tighten that all the way down. Once you have a tight connection there, then you're going to need to go on the back end of the motor. You're gonna lift up the back end of the motor, place the motor mounting bracket underneath the motor, 
put the 10 millimeter clevis pin through the motor, make sure everything's positioned correctly. You're gonna put two number 14 screws in the back end of that motor mounting bracket. Once that's assembled, you're gonna take the clevis pin back out, lift the motor up, put two number 14s again in the front side of that motor bracket, lower the motor again, put the 10 millimeter clevis back in, put the cotter pin in, and then bend it with your channel lock pliers so that it is in place. Once you have all that seated, test fire it with your remote, the unit should open and close correctly. And then after you're totally built, just use a remote, open her up, and that should be the complete assembly of your luxury pergola. If you have any other things you're interested in or you want to purchase one, go to theluxurypergola.com. We have all different models up to a 12 by 20, which is what you see here. This is a bronze with stone louvers. You can configure yours. You can add top trim, a center beam, the base trim we have on that back post there, whatever you need. I'll see you in the next one. Take care.